So my name is Brian Kaneko. Uh, I've been tattooing for 15 years and originally from the Bay Area. I uh, started tattooing, uh, apprenticing at a shop called Visual Tattoo that was up there in a town called Arcata. Pretty early on I got hooked up with Bill and Junie Salmon at the Diamond Club uh, in San Francisco and uh, they really took me under their wing and mentored me throughout the years when I was young. I would drive down to the city, I don't know, probably six to nine times a year, stay for a few days, get tattooed, do some tattoos, and just kind of soak it up. Being hooked up with Bill and Junie as I have been over the years in the Diamond Clubs kind of given me a lot of opportunities to meet some really great tattooers and, uh, you know, especially Japanese tattooers uh, and spend some really good quality time with them. Uh, through Bill and Junie, I met uh, Horitoshi and his family, and I would say that that's definitely been my biggest artistic influence in tattooing. Since I very first started, I was getting tattooed. I got my sleeve from Bill, probably late 90s. It was kind of modeled on that style, you know, just flowers, background. That's been kind of my background and main influences up till now. I mean, obviously Japanese tattooing is the style that I'm the most attracted to and I'm putting my most of my energy into pursuing. I've had a hard time saying that I'm exclusively one style or another because I don't want to sound limiting or uh, dismissive of anything else, um, but that's definitely the thing I hold closest to myself. Uh, I'm half Japanese and I used to have a lot of issues kind of struggling with, wow, you know, am I into this Japanese sort of culture and tattoo thing because, you know, a lot of Westerners are because it's totally fascinating and beautiful and interesting and rich or is it because, you know, it's something inside of me. My grandmother was a big influence on me. She's Japanese and I would go spend time with her in the summers and she still lived a very Japanese type lifestyle in terms of what she ate, how her house was decorated, how she carried herself. And she was definitely, I would say, the biggest influence on me growing up. So with Japanese culture, for me, in terms of how it translates to tattooing, it's been a lot less about actual images and stories and, you know, a lot of Westerners that do Japanese style work um, spend so much time and energy studying. Uh, and researching and absorbing uh, and that's amazing and it's so great uh, and I do that a bit myself obviously but uh, a big draw of it for me is kind of the mindset you know it's almost like a martial art like this Japanese idea that you're sort of honing yourself through your craft being very present in everything you're doing within that craft and I know a lot of cultures have certain you know arts and crafts that people really dedicate themselves in their lives to but there's something about the Japanese mode of uh, how they approach their work in relation to their mindset, in relation to the greater whole, is uh, what really interests me a lot. Uh, having spent time around some really serious Japanese tattooers, having been lucky enough to spend time around, again, you know, Horitoshi and his whole family, Bill and Juni through them, or excuse me, vice versa. Uh, I've learned a lot about Japanese tattooing that isn't necessarily just about the images. It's about how you carry yourself, how you treat the customer, how the session goes, how you interact with the person about what they're getting tattooed, what they want to get tattooed, how you execute that tattoo. And then in terms of the tattoos themselves, you know, I'm interested in kind of an overall, I guess, aesthetic rather than, again, I think it's obviously very important for us to like, do our homework and know the images we're putting on people to the best of our abilities, but also to keep in mind that there's an overall kind of aesthetic that's so uniquely Japanese that they have in their minds from having lived there, having you walk by temples on your way to school, you, you know, you see these sculptures and statues everywhere, you know, books, packages, you know, it's all, the imagery is just so thick there that it's kind of in their DNA. Actually, I was nervous about the whole being half Japanese thing for a while because it was sort of like you got one foot in each world a little bit. And uh, I remember the first time I went to Tokyo to visit, Horitoshi took me out to uh, sushi one night, you know, we kind of had a few beers and we're getting loose and he was saying, oh, you know, you're doing a good job or something about, you know, he gave me a positive affirmation about how I was doing okay. and. Uh, I remember saying, well, you know, thank you, but I'm, I'm I get very nervous because I'm half Japanese and I don't want to pretend to be something I'm not. And he kind of patted me on the shoulder and said, okay, half Japanese is better than no Japanese. And I'm laughing and laughing. So it made me feel good. You know, I feel honored that uh, I'm able to be connected with some of the really great people in tattooing that I am. And I've been, uh, just had the opportunity to hang out with so many really, really talented Japanese tattooers and have them be good friends and learn from them uh, and be kind of absorbed into a greater whole, you know, which is a big part of the Japanese tattoo thing for me is being part of a family or part of a group and working together and it's just been really great.